Do I have any buyer's remorse after spending $1,600 on the Apple Studio display? Hell yeah, I got buyer's remorse. Let's talk about this. What's up, y'all? Tight shirt, Terry Warfield, back for another video. Hope you're having a great day so far. Let's hop right into the meat and potatoes. You know what, Tim Cookie? You got me with this display, and I'm upset about that, but I accept that you got me. So before we get into my explanation on this, a few things I need to tell you. If you're expecting a super techie review, this is not that channel. And with that said, I do not script videos. So any mistakes I make, I just made them. Feel free to correct me in the comments as long as you do it respectfully or I will have to Will Smith you. So the Apple Studio display is like the girlfriend or boyfriend that you, like you, you knew that they were super toxic, but you decided because that one thing was so good that although the scale might have been like this, when it comes to pros and cons, yo, that one pro was worth it. That's the Apple Studio display. With that being said, I bought this a few days ago. I spent my hard-earned ducats for it, $1,600 freaking dollars, and I feel like it is way overpriced, but I accept the price, and I'm going to keep it. So I want to throw out this obvious fact, right? Are there better displays for the money display quality-wise? Absolutely. This is nothing special. I mean, it's a 5K display, yes. It's a 60 hertz display. It's got great brightness. It's got great color accuracy and all that stuff, which is one of the reasons why I got it. I'll talk about that in a minute. But if we look at it from a top-down perspective, there are great monitors literally everywhere. You can literally go to Micro Center and they have like 40 monitors, all which have 4K, 144 hertz, DCI P3, all of that stuff at a much cheaper price point than this, that you don't have to literally pay for a vase amount or anything like that. So a lot of y'all know I got fired or I got let go from my job, whatever you want to call it. And now I am a full-time editor. The monitor I have right here is an Aorus FV43U. It's a monster and it's a great freaking monitor, but I do a lot of gaming and it's perfect for that. But when it comes to editing, this was not the right monitor for me for obvious reasons, right? I won't go into that for this video. So when I thought about this, I said, you know what? I really want a monitor that's color accurate, which I know I can get that anywhere. I really want a high resolution monitor, which I know I could get that anywhere. But what I can't get anywhere is a monitor with this level of build quality that also talks to my other Apple devices. Terry, what do you mean by that? I'm kind of jumping around here, but we're gonna bring this around full circle, right? One of my biggest annoyances, and this is first world problems, I get it, is like when I hook up my Apple computer to my Aorus FV43U, the time it takes for my Apple computer to wake this freaking monitor is like a minute, and that's really annoying. And that's a small thing until you have to do it time and time again, day after day, like those small annoyances become big annoyances, right? The other thing I don't like, if I'm using an Apple computer with a non-Apple display, being able to do things like change my brightness or increase my volume or anything like that, I can't do from the computer itself. I have to do it from the monitor. Those things are really annoying. Some of you will argue that every monitor should have that built into it. Apple should not have this ridiculous ecosystem where you cannot control that stuff unless you use an Apple monitor. I totally agree, but Hey, it is what it is. This is the cost you pay to be in the Apple ecosystem. Oh, Terry, there's that word again, ecosystem. So that's where this monitor really shines at. And without the ecosystem, if you are not within the Apple ecosystem, this monitor makes zero sense for you to buy. It is completely overpriced. And all of the stands being 400 bucks and I like that's all BS. But I want to get back to the specs because there's some things that I need to talk about because I was wrong on some of them such as 60 Hertz now I want to say this real quick it's a lot of people defending this monitor saying that oh 60 Hertz is fine I don't prefer 120 over 60 you know what I just I, I don't believe that I'm sorry now I could be wrong there could be some people who do prefer it but I just can't see anyone picking 60 over 120 if you hand them two devices. No, I'm sorry, I don't believe it. But with that being said, people are entitled to their own opinion and everybody's opinion is valid. I initially said that it was crap that this monitor right here at 5K resolution does not support anything higher than 60 hertz until I found out that the HDMI 2.1 standard does not have enough data bandwidth to support 5K at anything higher than around 60 hertz. So if I'm wrong, you snobs can correct me in the comments, but from my research, that's what I concluded. So I have to step back and say that Terry Warfield was wrong on that because I was bombing this monitor for not having anything higher than 60 hertz. Now, with that being said, could Apple have given us a lower resolution, like a 4K monitor, and went with a higher refresh rate? Sure they could. However, Apple has been using 5K or higher displays in pretty much everything. The iMac going back a few years, the Pro XDR. So although they could have theoretically went with like a 4K higher refresh panel, 
I don't think Apple will go backwards and go back to a 4K display when it comes to their actual desktop studio display. So with that being said, I accept 5K 60 Hertz on this monitor. Would I have loved to see a higher refresh rate? Yes, but I feel like that would have bumped up the cost number one. Number two, I don't even know if that's possible, if it is possible. Now, I will say this, using my Aorus FE43U, which is a VA panel with like a 4300 to one freaking contrast ratio, is there a difference when using the Apple display? Yes, but it's not, it's not a drastic difference. I have a MacBook Pro 14 inch that has the Pro XDR display. Is it a better display? Yes, but it's not a massive difference. I've never once looked at this display right here like this looks like trash. The only thing I ever notice is when I'm viewing stuff that has like super dark blacks. Obviously, this is a typical LCD screen. So, with, you know, you're not going to get those super dark blacks. But with that being said, the monitor quality is still fantastic. It is nice and bright. The image looks amazing, especially at 5K resolution. So there's that, the whole resolution thing. Yeah, I'm pissed about Apple not giving us a HDMI port or anything else on the back because, you know, they got to close it into the Apple ecosystem. And I also don't like these monitor mounting options. Like, why do I need to pay an extra $400 for a mount that goes up and down and etc right if y'all wanted to leave that exclusive to the xdr which was ninety four thousand dollars okay then that price is in line with a much more expensive monitor but on this bad boy right here y'all should have came up with a cheaper option or lowered the price or something like that anyways now that that's out the way i want to talk about why i actually bought this monitor over everything else out there although it is overpriced there's two reasons ecosystem build quality let's talk about build quality First, you cannot get a monitor made like this at Micro Center or Best Buy or anything like that. This is typical Apple quality, like, you know, machined aluminum, everything is precision cut. Like, it looks like a super advanced piece of hardware, although I do think the bezels are a little thick, but at least they're uniform. Yo, it looks so freaking good on any desk. That's number one. If I have the option, which now we do have an option, having a display of this quality is fantastic. Number two, ecosystem and here goes that word again ecosystem right if you don't have other apple products none of this makes sense to you this whole thing is stupid if you don't have apple products but if you do have apple products then that's where everything kind of starts to make sense right i'm gonna give you an example one thing i hated about editing on this aorus fv43u is when i went to color grade although you should be using vector scopes etc i can eyeball footage on the macbook pro and pretty much get it right where i want it to when I'm editing without having to use any additional plugins or even looked at the vectors or anything like that. However, when I plug it up to my AORS FV43U, I found that although it might look fine on this display, when I export it, I don't get the same result as if I use my MacBook Pro and just export it from there. Meaning, the screen difference is a big deal to me. And I don't want to make two and three passes on this monitor trying to get my color corrections right. Some of y'all will say, we got to learn how to use scopes and vectors. Shut up, okay? Listen. That display on my MacBook Pro looks just like this display on my Apple Studio display when it comes to color accuracy. And that is something that is hugely, hugely important to me. And some of you will argue, Terry, you could get that on any monitor. Okay, I could. But the fact that it's in this monitor is what makes it fantastic because of ecosystem. So FaceTime, I'm always on a computer editing it. I hate having to pull out first world problem. I hate having to pull out other devices to do FaceTime calls with and do center stage with. With this bad boy right here, I got center stage built right into it. Let's talk about the speakers. The speakers on this monitor are literally next to this AORS FV43U because I think this monitor still gets the edge. Those things sound fantastic for the price of this monitor. It is unreal how good these speakers sound. And the last thing is all of the little nuance ecosystem stuff, right? You got an A13 built into this, which means this monitor can get software updates down the road, which also means it handles all of the stuff like spatial audio. And once Apple cleans up this software mess with the FaceTime camera, then we should get way better video quality out of the front facing camera. And there's other ecosystem stuff that I'm probably forgetting right now because I'm doing this off the top of my head. But the final point I'm trying to make is, although this monitor is overpriced, I'm okay. Although I have buyer's remorse about it, that I bought it. Because the ecosystem, from an overarching view at all Apple products, yes, from face value, they look like they cost too much. But it's when you use them that, although we still feel like it costs too much, those things become okay. Like, we accept them because it just works and that's what the apple studio is for people like creatives not gamers creatives 
who need a monitor that's color accurate that just works well with the rest of the ecosystem this is the monitor for you so do i have buyer's remorse i do but i'm not taking it back because right now at this price point although it's too expensive this is the best option right now that we have to fit within the ecosystem so if you are considering one and you're not a gamer and you use a lot of other apple products then although it's overpriced i still think it's worth it you should get one so anyways i'm curious to know what y'all think i'm sure the comment section is going to be on fire after this video but i'm very curious to know y'all thoughts don't forget to subscribe and stick around for more videos if you like this one techie video by the way i do all types of stuff on here family life camera stuff apple stuff all types of stuff make sure you subscribe i will catch y'all in the next video peace and chicken grease i'm out of here terry warfield peace